Welcome back to Quick Python number six this time with PageKey Solutions. I'm Steve and today we're going over our first data pipeline. We're going to ingest, transform, and output data. As always, we'll follow our learning checklist starting with why we would ever want to do this, the what, what it's going to look like, and how we can accomplish it. So why would we want a data pipeline? I think it's for three reasons. First of all, flexibility. When you're using the command line, whether you're on Linux or Windows, you might have all kinds of little tools and programs that you run on the command line, but maybe you're missing just one. Maybe there's one that doesn't do exactly what you need, so you can write your own in Python and you know handle the data however you want to do it. Similarly, automation. You can pipe input from a script instead of answering it yourself. By this I mean if a program is expecting a user to enter something on the terminal, Many times you can trick it into taking input from your program instead, whether you're ingesting from another program's output or you're forcing your input into that program to automate it. It's basically the same idea. We'll see both sides of that coin in this video. Finally, it's probably the easiest inter-process communication you can have. Uh, other ways of doing that would be networking, sockets, whatever you may have, or communication between threads, between processes, between computers. You don't really have to worry about any of that with this. As long as the program before you outputs its data to the terminal, you can instead redirect it into your program and handle it however you want. So bits and pieces of programs written in other languages, you can pipe them into this and handle them with Python, regardless of how that data got there. So clone the repository if you haven't already. Go into the quick Python folder and go to 06, first data pipeline. Do a listing on that directory. You'll see three files here, input.txt, tried and true, our program.py, and run.bash, which is really just a convenience for you on your own time. I'm gonna do it the long way. So first of all, let's just run the program. Uh, I'm gonna do cat input.txt. Well, first of all, what's that do? It just prints everything out, and these are some phone numbers, and they're not formatted. We'll pipe that to our program.py, and out come the formatted telephone numbers. And as the final touch, we can redirect this, if you're using bash, to output.txt, and this is what run.bash will do all in one fell swoop. There's your pipeline, and if you look again, you have output.txt there containing the formatted numbers. Pretty cool stuff. Let's figure out how we can accomplish this. So the code for this, pretty short, which is great for us. Um, all you have to do, start out by importing sys, and sys is going to help us access the stream coming into and out of our program. In most cases, this is you typing into the terminal and seeing the result in the terminal. But uh, in a more abstract sense, these things are known as standard in and standard out. So when you type, it's relayed to Python by way of sys.standardin. And you can read those lines in this way. And it's the same case if you are piping a file to it. Both of them are going through sys.standardin. So really, you can treat sys.standardin like it's a file that's already open. The same way that you would do it for a file, you just say for line in sys.standardin. And what are we gonna do with our data for each line? Uh, we're going to process it. And the first thing we'll do is create this raw phone number variable, and it's going to be just line.strip. What is the strip doing? Remember backslash n from our previous video? I can show you right now. This backslash n that we're adding at the end of lines, it means to hit enter basically. Line.strip just removes that so that we don't have extra line breaks and white space all over the place to the left and right of our data. Next, we're going to do some substrings, and it's really easy in Python. You just treat it the same way you would an array. You use these square brackets. So we're going to set our area code to the first three. Uh, before we go any further, I'll just note right here, optionally, I left a space for you to go try this out. You can validate whether the line is an actual phone number or not, if it's in the right format that you want it in. A very simple example would be check to make sure that the length is right. I'll show you what happens when the length is wrong in a second, but I'll leave that to you, however you want to do it. Anyway, the area code is the first three characters, so you go from 0 to 3, that gives you characters 0, 1, and 2. Then you have the first three of the actual phone number. That's going to be characters three to six. Pretty standard. And then the last four, I used a new uh, shortcut here, six colon. Uh, I didn't put an end number here. I didn't say six to nine. I just said six colon or six to ten. I just said six colon. What this is going to do is start at character number six and just go all the way to the end of the string, whether that's one character after it or a hundred characters or a thousand characters. 
So I left that there and I'll show you what happens when we put the wrong input in, but it is a helpful, helpful syntax to be able to do that. So keep that in mind. And then the last thing that we do is to print this out um, and we'll use our classic Python string template here. We just have parentheses, a string, uh, another string, and a dash and another string. And don't forget the space in between. And you use the percent sign and then you pass a tuple containing the values for each of those in order. So the first S is going to be the area code, the second S is going to be the first three, and the third S is going to be the last four. So that's all there is to it. And uh, obviously run.bash, all you do is dump that file into your program and redirect it to the output. So that's that. Before we wrap this video up, as promised, I'll show you what happens if we provide the wrong type of input. And another way of interacting with our program. If you do Python our program.py, now we didn't pipe anything to it. Instead of the pipe, we're just using standard input from what the user is typing. I'm the user. So I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Valid phone number. I'm going to hit enter. And it said, oh, there's a line. So in this four line in, remember that? I hit enter and it detects the end of a line. So it processes it. So let's see what happens if we type a bunch of numbers. There you go. You get the first you know, bit of the phone numbers processed correctly, and then you have six colon, right? Six to the end, and it just throws it all in there. So that's pretty cool. And if you're in this mode, for me at least, for my terminal, you hit control D, and that signals end of file, so it stops our program. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and uh, tune in next time for more Quick Python with PageKey Solutions.